Yeah, I'm Scott Gray. Um, my background's basically been in fishery science. Um, that's something I've always really loved, but obviously recreationally I really love fishing and diving and, and the outdoors. Grew up in Melbourne as a kid and I always loved the ocean. I loved fishing and, and all that from a very young age and I wanted to pursue a career in aquatic science as a fisheries biologist. So uh, I looked up the course guide and found at Warrnambool here they had aquatic science and natural resource management and moved down here when I was 18 and I basically never looked back. That was sort of 25 years ago now and just the last couple of weeks the water temperatures have started to rise and you know, typically this time of year when that happens we start to see a lot of our pelagic fish start to turn on and yesterday's plan was to go out and chase a few kingfish and uh, you know with weather like we had, we had nice sunny skies, you know it was about 25 to 30 degrees, flat and calm, it was just perfect to go out and chase a few kings. They're very moody and unpredictable fish and uh, I always respect that about them, uh, which is one of the things why I think it makes them very exciting to catch, you know. You can catch them at two kilos in size here or 20 kilos in size. So there's certainly a lot of mystery. You don't know what you're going to get next and you don't know certainly whether they're going to bite or not. So, you know, I really love that mystery. But some of the things that are really important if you're chasing kingfish is, you know, being persistent. I think that's probably one of the biggest things. They can be pretty moody and unpredictable at times. Uh, but certainly being active, using your sounder, using your eyes. You know, you'll find kings down here from, you know, in one metre of water through the summer months but also out in 50 metres of water. So there's a great diversity of different techniques you can use. So things like your live baiting, jigging, and your surface fishing with stick baits and soft plastics. You always want to be prepared for everything. Sometimes they won't eat uh, one lure, but they'll eat another one. Um, so I always basically have a few different lures rigged up. If I throw one in, they don't eat it, I throw another one in. And if they don't eat that, I throw another one in, and I just keep going. But more often than not, um, you know, they'll eat one of them. And uh, once you find out what's working on the day, then you're away. Okay, well this is the Sea Cruiser SC5600, uh, 5.6 metre open boat. Uh, I've got the side console here, but it also comes in a centre console as well. It rides really well for an open boat. It's actually quite dry, uh, really pushes the water down. Uh, and being reasonably heavy too, it's got a 6mm bottom plate, 4mm sides. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't bang, really cruises along well, keeps the water down and it's comfortable uh, to drive in for you know, long periods. One of the really cool things about the Sea Cruisers is that you can customise the features that you want on the boat and that's been really important for me as well because you know, I wanted an extra high casting depth because when I'm right up there on the front I want to be able to see everything. So uh, one of the things we did was actually raise the casting depth quite high so that when you're up there you can really see out, you can see down in the water and uh, you know, I think that helps me catch more fish. Yeah, the other really cool thing that you might have noticed about the boat is that we've got those T-bars in there instead of seats. I find that seats take up a lot of space, so we've got uh, T-bars in them. I think we sort of loosely call them monkey bars, and uh, you know, they're easily packed away, and uh, I haven't lost anyone over the side yet. Yeah, there's nothing like diving down here. It's, it's, it's a beautiful underwater environment. So, you know, I guess if you're down to chase a cray, you're looking for crays. But if you just stop and look around, you know, there's so many different species of fish. There's beautiful kelp forests. We even saw some Port Jackson sharks and banjo sharks and a wobbegong down there as well. Um, there's just so much to look at and, um, and so much colour as well, especially up in the shallow water. Got some really nice crays out of there today, up to a couple of kilos in weight. So pretty excited about heading back home and cooking those up this afternoon. The vessel basically weighs about uh, just under 1.3 tonne with everything on it, laden with fuel and motor and, and all your gear. The actual hull itself weighs around 800 kilos, so uh, it's not too heavy, but you know, heavy enough, and, and that's one of the reasons why it rides so well. Fuel tank capacity is 150 litres, and uh, I've never emptied it, so you know, not, not on a day trip out anyway. 5600 is fitted up with a 140 Suzuki, a four-stroke outboard motor. It's perfect for the boat. Uh, it's, the, the weight's perfect, so the boat's quite balanced, uh, but obviously it's quiet and reliable, and they're probably two of the most important things uh, for me with what I do. But the other thing too, obviously, is the economy. You know, obviously I do, do a lot of long distance trips, uh, and you know, obviously your fuel bill adds up pretty quick. So, uh, you know, having that uh, good economy, usually, you know, when I'm driving at about five, five and a half thousand revs, I'm using about 0.48 litres per kilometre. Uh, so just for example, on a trip to the shelf where I might do 170, 180 k's for the day, I'm probably using around about $80 uh, on fuel, which is um, very cost effective. I love it. I probably spend 600 hours a year in my boat underway and probably many more, you know, just floating. You know, it's my second office or maybe my first office. <laughs>